I'm John Cathcart, welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to be making a spool. The spool I'm making is for a wire uh, that goes to my microphone. I've uh, started making these videos and I got myself a microphone, a wired microphone to connect to my camera so it would eliminate a lot of the echo here in my shop. And I've found that I'm definitely going to need to have some way of managing this long wire that goes all over the place. So. Someday I'll probably get a wireless microphone, but for now, this is what I'm gonna use, and so I need something to manage it. Uh, usually, most of the things that I build stems from some kind of need. Um, maybe I need a place to put some bread, or maybe I need a box to hold something. Um, sometimes it's just a hook on the wall I need to make. Um, nevertheless, I find that most of the time, Rather than rushing out to the store to go buy something, I can just come down to my workshop and make something, which I find a lot of pleasure in. And also, I, I get a lot more satisfaction out of having something that I made myself as opposed to just something I bought off the shelf. Now, there's a lot of things that it makes sense to just buy it off the shelf, but if you can make something and you have the tools and the space to do it, why not just make something? So here we go. We're gonna make a spool today and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. I know that I want it to be just a general spool, uh, which will have a shaft coming through it, like that, and then another side on the far end. I know I want these two sides to be fairly thin, and I want this to actually to be a bit thicker than that that I drew on there. So, uh, because I want to have a hole in this side here, let me just give that a little depth, so I want to hold on that side because on my tripod I have these little arms that stick out and that uh, allow me to tilt the camera. And I think those would be a great place for me to be able to store the spindle or the spool when I'm not, when I'm not using it or when, uh, when I just a good place to put it in general. So I'll need to get a measurement of this so I know how big the handle needs to be, how big the hole needs to be in the center. And I'm gonna need two side pieces and I'm gonna need a center piece. Now the center piece I think I'm gonna build up from multiple pieces of wood, as opposed to just starting from a, a single piece. Because today I'm planning on using some uh, scrap wood that I have laying around. I have some, some wood from uh, a pallet. Um, so let's see here, just get a front view. I want it like this. It's just a really simple design. It needs to be small enough to fit in a pocket and from a side view, just be really simple like that. However, I do know that I want the wire to come across. To, I want a little groove for the wire and then that'll require a, a slice in one of the sides of the spool. So the wire can be wound up around this way, but it'll come through and it'll hook up to the camera. So that way the end of the wire that plugs into the camera can be on the inside of the coil. So that would mean that this is gonna have a little line like that cut out of it. And of course this will have that line and then one on that side. I won't go all the way down to the center obviously because I don't wanna have this go all the way through the middle, but I want it to be pretty far in there uh, so that it has enough of a groove so that it can sit flush. That should be pretty easy to do. The piece of wood I've selected is just a board off of a pallet. As you can see, it has some pretty big damage here. There's obviously holes that go all the way through it. And, uh, you know, it's, but it's got some usable material. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I believe this is probably maple, if I'm not mistaken. It's, sometimes it can be a little hard to tell. Um, now, some important notes, and I will place these up for you guys to see. When you're using pallet wood, you need to make sure that it's okay to actually use. Uh, there's good pallet wood and there's bad pallet wood. Um, now the main difference is, is whether or not it's been chemically treated. Um, in the United States, uh, all pallet wood is tagged by the manufacturer as to the method that they used to prevent bugs from being in it. The most common usage is heat treated. And so you'll see an HT symbol. You might also find other ones like MB, which if it says MB on it, you don't want to use it. Pretty much what you want to stick to is just the HT uh, pallets. 
any of them that are marked HD. And if they're not marked, you don't know. You, there's no way of knowing uh, how they were handled. The other thing is, is uh, the pallet wood itself, even if it's only heat treated, it might still not be good depending on how it was used. So you want to inspect it and look for anything that might have been spilled on it, like oils or chemicals or things like that, any kind of discoloration that's really bad. Um, also, another key factor, make sure it doesn't have any nails before you put it in through any tools. Uh, you don't want to like run this through your planer and have it discover a nail in there because that'll chew up your planer blades really quickly. Um, or you don't want to hit on your table saw or bandsaw or anything like that either. So the first thing I want to do with this piece of wood is I'm going to plane it. Now in order to do that, what I'm looking for, if you can see here, the edge of the grain and the direction of the grain is really important because if we do put this in the wrong way the planer will chew up the wood so you always want the planer to be going downhill uh, meaning that it's cutting with the if the grain is going this way right like the grain in the wood goes this direction like that you want the planer blades to cut this way instead of this way because if, if the grain of the wood is coming this way and the planer blade comes in there it'll grab that grain and it'll chunk out little pieces of wood and that's not that's not good now you will run across pieces of wood that have uh, the grain that shifts direction and you kind of just have to make the best of it and choose which direction you want to and which way the wood goes in for the most part in any case you get this in the planer and get it smoothed up I'm over at my planer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the wood in so that the grain is coming up this way. I can see it on the side. Sometimes you have to sand it a little bit in order to see exactly which way the grain is going. Uh, but in this case, I know that the grain is going this way. So I'm gonna put it in this direction so that it is cutting downhill, as they would say. All right, so this planer, has, this is a DeWalt 735 and it has a feeler gauge right here which is what I primarily use for this. Uh, as you can see, when I put it in here, this little red thing will move up a little. Now, I wanna lower it down so it's gonna take some, some of the wood off, but not too much. I don't wanna try and chunk out a whole bunch of wood at once. I just wanna take out a little bit of wood at a time. And I've got this set on the finish method, which is uh, 179 cuts per inch as opposed to the dimensioning speed, which is 96 cuts per inch, where it really pushes the wood through really quickly. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna have the wood go through nice and slow and smooth, especially because I'm using hard maple here. Now this is very loud, so always use your ear protection. As you can see, it's considerably smoother than it was before. Uh, you know, the wood was really rough on the other side, more akin to that, if you can see that. Now we have that. Now these blades are a little bit dull and they're, they're not exactly perfect. And I didn't dig down deep enough to take uh, a full layer off of here. There's still some original cuts right there, some rough areas. I don't know if you can see that. Now I want to plane the other side. I want both sides of the wood to be nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I want to take some wood off this other side to smooth up that side of the wood and have two smooth parallel sides. Now, like I said, now this isn't true jointing, like jointing the board would get me a perfectly flat, but this is going to get me two parallel sides on the planer, which is going to be good enough for what I'm doing today. So I'm going to lower this down a little bit to take a little bit of, take the uh, depth off here and uh, get it started. Now, as you can see, the wood is considerably smoother now. Looks a lot better. And this is gonna juice perfect for, for what I'm building today. So now I have my drawing here to work from. I have a pencil, eraser, I have a caliper, a ruler, and a compass. These are all the things that I'm gonna to need to lay this out on my wood. Now a couple of notes. Uh, I'm gonna be making the ends of the spool uh, thinner than I want the center pieces. The center pieces I wanna use the full thickness of the wood here but 
these uh, these ends. I want them to be a little bit thinner. I think they'll they'll be nicer if I do that. So first thing I need to do is uh, I need to work out how big the wood is and how big I want everything on here. So in this instance, I'm thinking that if I make this, all right, now this this wood here is 80, about 86 millimeters across. I prefer to work in metric. Uh, you can work in imperial measurements if you want to. Uh, I find that metric is easier for my brain to wrap around. So I've already taken uh, a measurement of the, the arms of the side of my tripod and they come out to be about 25 millimeters, which is about one inch. Uh, so half of, half of that would be 12.5. So I know that I need to make my compass about 12.5 millimeters roughly uh, for that. I actually want to make it slightly above that because I want the hole in the middle to be just a little bit bigger than the size of my, uh, the size of, of the handles on there. So when I cut those holes, or actually when I drill those holes out later, I want them to be just a little bit bigger than that. I may have to do some sanding to get it because I, I think my drill bit that I have for that might only be about an inch. In any case, um, so there's about, about 12 and a half, 13. That's about 13, all right? Then I need to find a center point on the wood. So half of 86 would be 43. So at about 43 millimeters in, I'm gonna make a mark. Please, just a simple mark here. Going that way, all right, and then now I know that I want to make this about six centimeters. The sides I want them to be about six centimeters wide. So just to keep things simple here, I'm going to go out approximately six and a half inches or six and a half centimeters out here. I'm going to put a mark there. The centers being. Let me just make sure that I get this centered on here at 43. There we go, just about there. So since the centers need to be about 12 and a half, 13 millimeters, I'm just gonna stick the point in there and draw myself a circle. And that is gonna be my center hole. And I'm going to draw another circle here. All right, so there's my first shapes there that I need. Now I need this to be, I want those the exterior where I'm gonna to cut to be about six centimeters across. So if I measure this out to three, that'll be from the center point, we'll make it roughly six. Right about there, it's good. So I can just put it back in the center point and then draw my circle. Okay, and then now I made these six and a half, so there should be a little bit of room. And there is, just enough for me to cut that out later. Okay. So now I have my two end pieces uh, designed up. I know that I'm gonna wanna plane this down a little bit, so I'm gonna wanna leave a little bit of length. I don't like to put short pieces. In fact, putting short pieces through your planer is a bad idea. So I'll probably just cut this in half and then work on the other end for the center pieces of this. So I'll, now I'm noticing there's a crack here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And the crack in the wood extends to about right there. So I'm just gonna put a little mark here to let myself know not to work in this area here where this crack is. There's another crack there. That crack seems to extend out to, well, quite a, quite a ways. It comes all the way out to here. Okay, so I'm going to, now that I figured out that I have cracks in the wood out to those distances, then I'm going to draw my circles a little bit further in. 
So again, I'm going to do 43. And now these are going to be smaller. I think I'm only going to make these four centimeters uh, on its thickness. So with that in mind, if I make my next mark out here, so it's only going to be four centimeters. If I make it, if I put it out here, five centimeters, that should, well, five and a half. I'll go five and a half. Um, five and a half centimeters out there. Come in. 43. All right. Now, again, I'm going to need this at about 13 centimeters for the center hole. And I don't necessarily need to draw the center hole on these, but uh, yeah, I just like to make sure everything is, is pretty much laid out so I can visualize it if nothing else. All right, so there's my center. All right, and then on my second one. There we go. So now I have the two center holes. Now I want this to be about four centimeters. So I'm gonna to need to measure out two on here. Had the compass jump out of me a little bit. That happens. Just don't worry, just put it right back in the center. Okay, so now that's marked out. Next up, I gotta cut this sucker in half. So now I'm over here at the table saw, and uh, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that the blade height is just slightly above the height of the wood. You don't want it to be sticking up too tall. And the next thing I'm going to do is lay this out exactly where I want to cut it. Where I'm just going to cut this right down through the middle where these old nail holes are. Because uh, why not? It's a, it's a good middle point. Now this is a cross cut sled. And if you don't have a cross cut sled, I highly recommend you, you make one. Um, I've seen uh, a bunch of videos on how to make these, so I'm not going to cover that, obviously, but uh, at least not today. But this is, uh, this is one of the handiest things in my shop is this cross-cut slide. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to cut this in half. Now I'm going to take the wood that I just did for the side pieces. As you can see, there's the circles there, if you can see those. And I'm going to plane it down to a thinner stock. Uh, I want to, not being real precise on how thin, uh, it's just going to be a matter of taste. Um, I, I want those sides to be a little bit thinner, not, not crazy thin, but again, ear protection. Yeah, that's a little bit thinner and exactly where I want it. Next, I'll cut excess wood away from the, uh, the, the circles that I've created so that when I take it to the bandsaw, there's less wood to remove. I'll do that on the table saw using my cross cut slide. I'm going to get the cut lined up just on the outside. I want to leave some material there because I want some material to work with on the bandsaw, but not too much. So there we go. That's about right. I'll cut this off. And now it's time to uh, cut those pieces out on the bandsaw.
Now, you'll notice that there's a small piece of wood that got that fell down in that hole there. I don't like continuing to work with that. So I will go ahead and just remove that. Get back to it. Next, I'm going to take each of the pieces of wood and I'm going to make a small indentation in the center where the compass was was uh, po poking into them with an awl. Now what this will do is it'll help when the drill bit comes down, it'll help it center up on that spot. So if I just find that spot, I kind of feel for it. And then I just sort of twist and push to make it a little deeper. And it doesn't, again, this doesn't need super precision. This is not a crazy precise thing that I'm making here. So, so I'm not working, worrying about too much about being absolutely perfect on everything. But, you know, if you do some precision, that's still better than none. So, there we go. Now I have little divots in the center of each of these pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and drill them all up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the uh, two center pieces and I'm gonna glue them together before I sand them smooth. Uh, that way they come out the exact same. Um, and if I try to sand them individually, they won't. Now, the uh, idea here is that I'll take the rod and I'll push the rod through there. This is just a little pokey stick I have that happens to be that diameter. Um, so I'll apply the glue, push the rod through on that and then I will take the other side and put it on there and then I will clamp these together and then remove the rod. So the uh, it should be a pretty easy process. I have some tight bond 2 and a little glue bot. Um, this is a baby bot. I love these things. If you don't have one they're not expensive and they are super handy. I love them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. Okay, couple of little clamps. And I move the rod. Now, this I'm gonna let sit for at least a half an hour, probably longer. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the top pieces, or the outside pieces of the spool, and I've put the rod through them so that they will align with each other. And I'm just gonna leave the rod in there while I sand them on the sanding wheel on my lathe. So here we go. Okay, so here I'm just going to try and round this out and make it nice and smooth all the way and uniform across both pieces. And uh, I'll just use my finger in the center here as a pivot point uh, as I turn it and sand it smooth. One thing I do is as I am sanding, I move towards the center a little bit because it's a little bit slower rotation there in the center, or there's less movement of the sanding wheel. So I get a little bit of slower sanding, a little bit smoother. You'll notice here that 
the wood is not really center. Like if you rotate it, it's a little bit like it's a little bit off. So what I did was is I took my caliper and I got it to a, a good distance and then I traced a line measuring from the inside of the, the center hole. And then I took my pencil after I scribed a, a you know like scribed a little line in there and I filled in the line with my pencil going around it so that it would be you know, I get a good measurement of where the where it needs to be all the way around. And then, you know, wherever I went over a little bit, I try and erase the the line so that I can only see where where I need to shave off and get them nice and round. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do right now. As you can see, they're significantly more round and both of them are quite uniform now. I got that dialed in a lot better than it was before. Now they're a little bit smaller, but that's okay. This, this is not based on some sort of requirement. This is just building something that's gonna be useful for me and it's still gonna be useful even if the exterior's a tiny bit smaller. Now what I'm gonna do is take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna lightly sand over the edges just enough to make it uh, not a sharp corner on the edges of the, the spool. I just want it to be a, you know, a little bit softer to the touch. So I'm just gonna lightly sand over and just round over that edge. I just work my way all the way around, turning it a little bit at a time. And I'm rotating the sandpaper too as I go, you know, like over the edge, like this way in a curved motion to just try and round it out a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make it a little bit nicer to the touch. I flip it over and go the other way. I feel it for any sharp edges that are still left and just take them, knock them down as I, as I find them with my, my thumb there or my finger. I'll go ahead and do that with the second one as well. Okay, so for this step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry fit the pieces all together and make sure that everything is working out just how I want it. So I'll slide this right on the rod there and then I'll put the second piece on just like so, and then finally I'll put the third piece on there and they all look like they're fitting together pretty nicely. Now, one thing I'm gonna do when I'm gluing this all together is I don't wanna get the glue all over the outside area uh, too much. I wanna, uh, I wanna keep the glue, you know, specifically in this area right here and that area right there without it spreading out too far. So my plan here is I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the glue and I'll spread it onto here, and then I'll spread it onto there, and then feed this onto the spool like so, and then I'll feed on the third part, uh, and basically that way what will happen is is the glue will only be where I want it to be in those center parts. Later, you know, I'll be drilling a hole through this whole thing, so. Uh, yeah, but for now, I think it's ready to glue up. So I'll leave that on there because I want that piece. So I'm gonna take some glue and apply it to this side. I'm gonna put a fair amount because this is the only thing that's gonna be holding it together. Okay, spread this around. I'm probably gonna have to add a little more. We'll see in just a moment. Okay, let's see. Yep, that's enough for that side, I think. Now some glue for this side. Spread 
put this around. Double check this side here. Still looking pretty good. All right, now to insert the rod. It's a little snug with that glue in there. Okay, and then through that one. Okay, now the pieces are all together. I'm gonna take the clamp here attach it to this end. I'm going to try and make sure I attach it along the grain here. So I don't want to squeeze too hard. Another one. From that side there. Alright, now I'm going to try and get this rod out of here before the glue dries because that would be a monster to get out of there later. I don't want to come out. All right, got stuck in there pretty good, so I'm using a pair of pliers to just wiggle it back and forth and just gradually work it out of there. Just about out there. Now with it completely removed, I'm gonna just attach these clamps a little bit closer to the center and just let them sit. Now I don't wanna take these beads of glue out of there just yet. There's tiny little beads in there, but I'm gonna let them dry a bit before I take them out with a, the edge of a chisel. Now that the glue has uh, hardened up a bit, and I'm gonna take the uh, take a chisel. And I'm just gonna gently just push on this. Just watch your fingers, though, just to get that glue to come up and out of that that little joint right there, where that where they meet. And I'm just going real slow and simple. Try not to notch the wood at all. And at the same time, removing the glue. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. That's pretty good, got most of that out of there. That's looking all right. Now I need to wait for this to cure uh, entirely before I'm gonna do the next part, which is drill down through the middle. That's gonna be kind of a dodgy move. And uh, I wanna make sure the glue has completely set before I try anything like that. So, wait until it dries. So now I have the spool locked down on my drill press here with a couple of steel bars and a number of clamps. I have a piece of sacrificial wood underneath on the bottom, uh, and that is so that the forger bit can pass all the way through the spool into the sacrificial wood and I don't get any tear out on the back side of the spool, or at least minimal amounts of tear out. Um, I'm starting the, the the bit very, very close to the wood because you're supposed to keep a Forstner bit in contact with the wood right from the get-go, which is a little different than a lot of high-speed drill bits. Um, I'm going to be moving it in and out, uh, gradually working my way down through, trying not to overheat the bit because these will generate quite a bit of heat. Uh, so you don't want to just try and cram it down through. Uh, I've got the drill press set up on low speed and uh, I'm going to give this a go and hopefully nothing moves and I end up with a nice clean hole all the way through. Okay, let's see how this goes. I 
I believe I've made it all the way through to the bottom. I'm just double checking before I move anything. All right, I've removed the clamps and now I'm going to uh, see if how clean this hole is. And if it went all the way through. And look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, as per the original design, I wanted to make a small groove in the spool where the wire can sit through there like that. So what I need to do is take a little measurement here, as you can see, you see that there, the wire is about two millimeters thick. So I'm gonna to need to make that groove about two millimeters. And that's not a problem. I'll do that on the bandsaw. Originally in the design, I was only gonna cut through one side of the spool, but I've put it all together and I didn't cut that line earlier. So it looks like I'm gonna do that now. It's probably actually a better idea to do it at the end so that everything lines up just right. And I'm not trying to line it up while I'm gluing it together. So I think this is gonna work out just fine. I'll use the bandsaw to cut into that and just cut a little two millimeter line that I'm gonna draw onto the spool in just a moment. All right, so now I'll use my feeler gauge to get an idea of how deep I need to cut into the side in order to make that groove for the wire. So I'm gonna use the feeler gauge on the end of the caliper to just go down until it touches the inside of the spool. And it comes out to about 8.81. So if I add another two millimeters for that, to that so that it, uh, it has room for the wire to go along the edge here and to kind of be sunk down a little bit. So I need to add two millimeters. That takes us up to about 10.8. So if I go right to about 11, that gives me a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra wiggle room there for the wire. It doesn't have to be totally exact. I'll just lock that down. And then I'm gonna make a small score in the wood right about where I wanna cut, which is right here. So I put the edge there and just drag a little score on the wood. So that'll allow me to mark it very easily at the depth that I wanna stop cutting. Now I just need to make a line that comes straight out from there, that's approximately two millimeters wide, and I should be good to go to take this to the bandsaw. Okay, now I'm over at the bandsaw, and I've got the mark set up, and I'm just gonna be taking it very carefully and slowly in. Now the bandsaw blade is only gonna cut about one millimeter wide, and this needs to be two millimeters uh, on the cut, so I'm gonna have to do a couple of passes on this. So I'm just gonna go real slow and careful, and try and get that as straight as I can get it. All right, here we go. That looks pretty good. And the uh, hole goes all the way down through. So there we go, I've got a nice groove for the wire. Now it's time to try it out. I'm going to take the wire and run it through the groove in here and make sure there's enough room that it can connect with the camera. Then I'll reach over with my thumb and hold it while I begin to wind it up around the spool. Just Gradually move around and make sure that I keep it nice and tight and snug against the previous line. And now while holding it with my thumb, I'll just wind it on. And now it's the moment of truth. Will it fit on the tripod? And the answer is... Yes, it does. Beautiful. Well, I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me in my shop while I made myself a useful little tool out of some old scrap wood. Uh, if nothing else, I hope I have inspired you to come up with some ideas of your own. Uh, maybe you learned a new technique, or maybe you figured out something that you could use in your shop that wouldn't be very difficult for you to build and might not take very much time. Until next time, I'm John Cathcart, and this is Cathcart Woodworks.